everyone. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the admin console of Adobe Creative Cloud for Teams. Uh, whether you're a longtime Creative Cloud user or just getting started, this video will help you manage your organization's accounts so your team can collaborate seamlessly and unleash their creativity. Uh, so let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Alex Kim. I'm a product manager here uh, within the admin console working on testing and optimization. Uh, Pepe. Thanks, Alex. I'm, uh, I'm, my name is Pepe Ragusa. I'm a principal product manager here on the Adobe Admin Console team. I've been here for about five years and uh, my job is to make it as easy as possible for our customers to manage the licenses that they purchase from us. Um, so whether you're a small company or a large enterprise, uh, we want to hear from you about how we can help you deploy Adobe licenses in your company. Awesome. So uh, Pepe, I'm just going to answer. I'm just going to throw a bunch of questions at you today um, around the admin console. Uh, and I assume you'll you'll show us kind of these end-to-end -end workflows. So let's just get right into it. What is the admin console, and where can I find it in Creative Cloud for Teams? Great. So the admin console at its core is a dashboard that uh, our customers use to manage their licenses. Um, it has a number of capabilities, but really at its core, it, it is really just to see what licenses you purchase, how you assign them to your employees, how you uh, revoke uh, licenses when employees leave the company uh, or if they no longer need them. So that's really the core capability of the console. So it sounds like the admin console is great because it's going to help us save time with consolidated management. Uh, it allows us to take full control of user permissions um, and then it protects our company's creative assets with centralized storage and asset reclamation. Yep, that's that's exactly right. By the way, uh, let me just you know remind everyone how to get here. So first of all, there is a URL, so it's a web app. Um, you can just remember adminconsole.adobe.com or add a bookmark to that. Uh, another way that you can go there if you are a system administrator is um, to click a link in the account page. So that's account.adobe.com. And if you use also the Adobe apps on your desktop, there's a link on the left side of the Creative Cloud app. Um, so, uh, you know, we have many entry points for you to uh, find the admin console. And I should also say that I think I mentioned that uh, you can only see the admin console if you're a system administrator. So a normal end user that is like a creative in your company that just uses the uh, creative applications would not have access to the admin console. Got it. Uh, so let's dive a little deeper um, and let's start talking about uh, managing users and licenses. Uh, so the first question on that is, how do I add or remove users from my Teams account? Sure, let me show you. Um, here's the admin console for a, an imaginary company. Um, so here you can see that you purchased 10 seats of uh, or 10 licenses of Creative Cloud All Apps, which is a license that includes all our applications and all our services. Um, so as you can see, you're already using eight of these 10 licenses. And if you want to add a new user, you can uh, go to the Users tab here uh, in the top navigation. It's, it's extremely easy. So you in this page, you click Add User. Uh, it's the blue button on the uh, top right corner. And you just enter the email address of that person. So imagine that it's zoe at example.com. You add Zoe as a team member here. You select the license. In this case, you only have one product, the all apps product. But if you have multiple products, this will list all of them. And when you click save, that's it. Uh, Zoe was added to your team and uh, we're sending a welcome email to the new user. We're going to help them um, to get started with a new license that you just gave them. If you're a new customer and you're still setting up your admin console and you haven't entered any users yet, uh, you don't have to add all these users one by one. Uh, as you can see on the on the right corner here, there is a add users by CSV button, which is a really convenient uh, bulk upload feature for users. Okay, so whether I want to add a single user or multiple users, it's just, it's just a few clicks, which is going to save me a bunch of time. Yes, absolutely. That's our goal. Um, great. Okay. So next question for you then is, uh, what happens if I run out of uh, available licenses for a specific product? Can I add more? Yeah, absolutely. So if you um, want to buy more licenses, you can, um, in the overview page, we have a buy more button. Uh, you can also do it from the products page. But essentially, all that you need to do is buy more you'll see a list of all the products that uh, are available to you. In this case, uh, you already have 10 
Creative Cloud all apps. So you have nine of 10 licenses used. We just uh, gave one to Zoe, if you remember. And if you need more of these, you can just increase the number here. Imagine you want five more. You just say, I want five more. And you click, you know, you click review order. You complete this process. It's very easy. We're going to charge the credit card on file and uh, um, and you can start assigning those five new licenses right away. And by the way, in this case, as I said, um, this company purchased licenses with a credit card, so we're charging the card on file. But if you purchase from an Adobe reseller, uh, you can still add licenses in the admin console using this same workflow and you can start using them right away, uh, but you will have to complete the order with your reseller within 30 days. Got it, okay. Great, so then next question for you is, how do my team members get access to new products after they're added? Yeah, so let's say that you assigned um, a license to a user in the admin console, just like we did. Um, if the user has administrative privileges on their machine, then they can download the apps directly from the adobe.com website and uh, they can start using them right away. Uh, but in most companies, users don't have admin access on their machine, so the admin has some level of control on how they want to install the software on those machines. Uh, and so for that, we have the Packages tab in the Admin Console. Uh, so here, you can create a package, which is essentially just a zip file with some special settings. And um, once you build that package or that zip file, you can install it on the, on the end-user machines. Uh, or you can use some special third-party tools for software distribution, and our packages work very well with those um, tools as well. Okay, great. Um, so next question for you then is, uh, let's say I have different kinds of users in my organization. Uh, for example, marketing users who only need a few apps and design users who need full Creative Cloud access. Can I control that in the admin console? Yes, yes. So let's create a package together. Uh, so I can show you how that works. So when you create a package, first you need to select the type of package. And um, so here you need to choose whether it's a self-service package or a managed package. Um, um, in other words, if in a self-service package, the user is free to install updates whenever they're available, they're completely self-sufficient. Uh, while in a managed package, the administrator decides when those updates are installed. Uh, so this way the admin can make sure that all the users get the updates at the same time. So let's say you wanna build a, a manage package. In the next screen here, you can select um, the platform. So say that those are you know, Windows, um, uh, Windows applications, or you, of course you can select Mac and um, the different platforms. And then in this screen, you will select what apps you want to install. So for example, if you have a team that only needs Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, you can build a package, in this case a small package, that only includes Photoshop and Illustrator. And uh, after this, you uh, have a number of settings that we're going to um, accept uh, with their default values in this, in this example. And then uh, towards the very end here, you can um, uh, essentially just finish the process, say this is PS plus Illustrator, and you can build your package. So, um, of course, you know, all of these um, pages in the workflow are documented in our help pages. There are a number of bells and whistles and settings. And so, as I said, so once this is building the package right now, like I said before, once this is ready, um, the zip file will be downloaded to your computer. And from that moment, you can start deploying it. Uh, all right, great. Thanks for that, Pepe. So next question for you. Um, so, you know, uh, what happens if apps within these packages get updated? Uh, how do I get the latest version for my team? Yeah, so the, the initial package that you deployed, um, if that was a self-service package, um, your users are autonomous, like I said, self-sufficient, so they can install all the latest updates on their own. Um, otherwise, if it was a managed package, you can come back to the package's workflow and just select the, the updates, build a new package with those updates and deploy it. I want to switch gears really quickly, Pepe, and talk a little bit more about uh, billing and contracts and how we manage those. Uh, so the first question for you on that subject is, if I'm responsible for managing the contract and invoices for my Creative Cloud for Teams account, uh, where can I access that information? 
Yes, so if you're the contract owner, you can find all that information in the account tab in the admin console. So let's take a look. Uh, as you can see here, I'm the contract owner of this uh, fictitious company. Uh, the admin console has all my contract details, the renewal date, um, also a list of all the past bills that you can see here. Uh, so you can find all this information in the admin console. Okay, great. Um, so what if my company hires a new IT person who needs to take over managing um, our Creative Cloud uh, account? How would I transfer ownership to them? Yeah, so as you can see, right now I'm the contract owner in this uh, organization and um, and also a system administrator. But I, I first want to clarify that you can have as many system administrators as you want in the company, in, in the admin console. Uh, a system administrator will only consume a license if they are given a license, if they are assigned a license here. But uh, if someone is added to the admin console and uh, they don't have a license assigned to them, they won't be used. They, they won't be able to use the uh, applications, uh, but they will still be able to come here to fully manage users and licenses. And the contract owner is a special system administrator that the, that can also manage bills and, and billing. Uh, and uh, like you said, if the current product owner is no longer involved with billing and uh, wants to transfer this responsibility to someone else, there's a simple way that you can do this. So here next to my name, there's a change link. And this screen brings up a list of all the system administrators in the company. So as you can see, you and I are the admins, but I am the contract owner right now. And if I want to transfer that to you, I will just select you from this list and click save. And from that moment on, uh, I lose my contract owner role and you gain it. So it means that I will not be able to do any billing here anymore and you will. Okay, great. So I want to switch gears again, Pepe, and talk a little bit about uh, managing cloud storage and reclaiming assets. Uh, so the first question I have for you is, uh, one of the great things about Creative Cloud is, you know, we get a terabyte of cloud storage per user. So I'm not super worried about running out of space, uh, but as an admin, uh, how can I see how much storage my team is using? Yes, so let's take a look at the storage tab. So there's a storage tab here in the top navigation. And um, here you can you can see immediately your overall Creative Cloud storage quota and how much you, you've used. So in this case, like you said, you have one terabyte of storage per user. So that's 10 terabyte of storage total. Um, so you can also see here that I'm only using um, a little bit of my 10 terabytes, just 154 gig. And you can also see the top five users in storage com consumption. Um, so if you see, if you want to see more details, you can click the individual user folders link here um, or visit the page on the left side. Okay, great. Um, so the next question then is, uh, since everything gets backed up to the cloud, what happens if we have a team member leave our organization? Can we still get access to their stored files through the admin console? Yes, yes, that's that's part of the power of the you know cloud-based storage. So as a company, you are in control of the assets, and uh, you can reclaim all the assets when someone leaves the, uh, your organization. So let's see how it works. It's pretty simple. So if you go to the users tab, and now um, like you see all your users and those that are um, those that, are, that have been assigned a license. Let, let's see. I think Manuela was one of the users that had some uh, storage. Sorry, some uh, some assets in her storage. Let's imagine that Manuela leaves the company, and so you come here, you select her, and you remove Manuela from the list, which uh, brings up this screen in which the admin console is asking you, uh, you know, what you want to do with the assets um, that are in Manuela's storage. So a simple thing that you can do is to transfer this content to another user. So you would just type the email address of the new user. Or you can decide to park it and decide what to do with it later. Or you can also decide to permanently delete the content. Okay, so uh, everyone watching by now uh, should be an expert in the admin console. Uh, but what if we need some additional uh, support, right? Uh, so if I have questions on the Creative Cloud uh, for Teams, or if I run into technical issues, where can I go for help? Yeah, the admin console has a support tab. Um, there is uh, a phone number here that you can call on the top right corner. Uh, you can start a chat session um, and, and this is live, so an agent will help you right away. Uh, there is uh, 
By the way, the phone number, of course, changes by country. So this is the US number, but otherwise you'll see the local phone number. Uh, we also offer expert sessions. You can request one with this button here. And uh, I would strongly recommend um, that every customer takes advantage of this amazing service that we offer. Essentially, these are live sessions that you can schedule with uh, Adobe Customer Care to ask any questions that you have about any of the products that you bought. So here you see uh, if you have a question about editing video, Premiere Pro, After Effects, you can just schedule a video creation uh, expert session. And um, as I said, um, you'll have a live person helping you out with that. Awesome, great. Um, and then last question on support is, uh, you know, if I want to uh, do my own research and uh, kind of self-serve as much as possible, uh, where can I do that at? Absolutely. So the support tab has links to our support pages here uh, or the community forums. We also have a uh, number of links here in these uh, tiles to the uh, most popular articles in, uh, in the online documentation. But I also want to point out something in the overview page. There is a search button, the search box on the on the right side. And here you can literally just uh, search for uh, what you're looking for um, to try to solve the issue that you're facing and the top matching articles will come up here from our online documentation. Awesome. All right. That's all the questions I have. Uh, I mean, thanks so much, Pepe, for uh, for running us through the admin console. Uh, and thanks to everyone for, for tuning in. Thanks, Alex. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs>